the uh, Metro County Board of Supervisors to order. We have an agenda before us. I'll ask if there's any additions, corrections, changes. Nothing. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agenda for June 12th. Just the signature page. Item number two, County Attorney General Discussion. I don't have anything. Well, quite a Western Front. No. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing. Yes, that's locked. Just on it. No, we've got that Crooks hearing on the 22nd, whether we just wait to move in the court or, or the district court. Or but I'm certainly assuming the judge is going to close that hearing. He hasn't ruled on that yet. And, and I'm fine with that because uh, the less facts that get out, the less chance there is for motion for a change of venue to move it somewhere else if people don't hear about it. Mr. Judge Rosenblatt out of Mason City. I'd be surprised if he does it. I guess the only comment I have, uh, Mark, is uh, if members of the audience here are making derogatory remarks against one or more members of the County Board of Supervisors at their open meetings here, do we have to tolerate it and can we ask them to leave? Well, number one, this is your meeting. It's not a public hearing, you know. For instance, if you're going to pass an ordinance, you have public hearings. Or if you're going to have bonds, you have, and they're open for public comment. If you're going to sell real estate, that's open for public comment. Here, this is just your meeting, so number one, you do not have to allow comments from the public. Number two, <coughs> if someone's disturbing the meeting, yes, you have a right to have them removed. Um, but there's also the freedom of speech issue that, you know, they're always conflicting with each other. Are you disrupting or are you exercising your right to freedom of speech? And there's a fine line between the two of them. I would hope that things don't <laughs> degenerate, is that the right word, so much here? Like, because I know they used to have problems with that over in, was it Mason City or Saragoro County? It was one of the board meetings over there where they were always, they were having the sheriff there and having the sheriff remove somebody. And, you know. So the short answer is you don't have to allow comments to fall. If someone's being disruptive in any matter, yes, you can have them removed. Okay, thank you. Yep. <coughs> I see down on uh, item number nine there's a resolution to allow uh, golf carts on Highway 105. I looked in the Iowa Code 321 and it's not allowed on primary road. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, well, it was in our packet, I guess. Okay. Probably, probably didn't see it. One oh five is a county road. County road. County road. Okay. We've allowed it going out to uh, Sunnybury from <coughs> and so citizens of St. Ansgar ask for the same right that the citizens of Osage are receiving. And so that's why it was put on the agenda. I understand that, uh, but I look at the traffic count and it's 10 times greater, 800 traffic count on 105 compared to 80 on Gulf Force Road. And, and you've got a bridge to cross over on 105. And I feel that's in violation of the Iowa Code. Right, spell allows them to cross, to cross Highway 9 mm -hmm. and to go to the golf course over there. And I'm sure yeah. there's quite a few. Does Rice still have it? No, you don't have to get permits for golf carts, you do for ATVs. Okay. I misspoke. Now they can cross the road, but you're looking at what, half a mile or I'm not sure how far it is up, but it's quite a ways if you look at it. You know, it's from the edge of town here and then they gotta get across the cedar on that bridge. <laughs> that's 
it's not up for a vote yet, so I just thought why not on the mark here, I would ask. But I, I thought, according to Iowa Code, it's not, they're not allowed linear travel on a, on a primary road, and I would assume 105 would be a primary road. I would have to check. I do yeah, know the yeah, answer. I, I know. Want me to check on that? That'd be good. Okay. I just think it's, it's uh, too dangerous of a path. Okay. That's just my opinion. But. There's really good shoulders there. Yeah. My concern probably would be when you get to the bridge. You got the bridge to deal with, and, and it's just not legal to create a third. Stop and go there, you know, but it's not legal to create a third lane of traffic either. <coughs> but anyway, taking away all of our fun, Bob. <laughs> well. As a county mayor, I'd recommend you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it may be fun, but I just I'm look at that. I mean, we lowered the uh, yeah, it's okay. foothill there, you know, so they would have more clearance to see the bridge and everything for the barbecue. The golf carts don't move very fast, and I don't know. I just think it would be fun. Icicles don't need room. Mean, People driving vehicles have to be prepared for people walking on roads, for horses on roads, for... Well, did you say that you had to be flagged and also have slow moving vehicles on now? That's what St. Ansgar has in order to operate within their city limits. So, flagged in, like you say, the slow moving vehicle sign on the golf course. That's what else they just do, right? Flag, slow moving vehicle, rear view mirror, proper brakes. Yeah. In Riceville, I think it's the same way also with all that stuff for their golf cart. But yeah. you're just, they're just crossing the road. Though. I know, but in town, they have to oh, have sure, all yeah. that. In town, that's yeah. not But our they have to have all those things yeah. to have on them to cross, but it's all that stuff. I see Janelle Dunn's here from St. Ansgar. Have you had any... Um, yeah. Have you heard anything about uh, using the, the golf carts to go to Acorn Park? or? Yeah, I have some concerns. I, I feel it's quite dangerous, but that's that's me. I uh, talked to uh, Barb Clark, Clark, Department of uh, DOT, and he just said it violates that 321.247 because Highway uh, 105, it says basically... Uh, uh, well, I'll read the whole thing to you. Incorporated areas may, upon approval of their governing body, allow the operation of golf carts on city street by persons possessing a valid driver's license, which is fine. That's St. Ansgar. However, a golf cart shall not be operated upon a city street, which is a primary road extension through the city. And he said Highway 105 would be that but shall be allowed to cross a city street, which is a primary road extension through the city. Sounds to me like that's uh, discussing within the city, not the county. Oh, it's, it's Iowa Code. Yeah, it's yes. Iowa Code. A lot of stuff is <coughs> Iowa Code, but that's some stuff relates to cities, some stuff relates to counties. And this morning I drove out there, and it's uh, about one mile from that first street out to Acorn Park. There's a no passing zone on both sides of the street by the curve what that comes out from Grain Millers. And then you have the small bridge going over Turtle Creek, which has no passing on both sides. And then you continue down by McKinley's and then that bridge. And then when you make a left-hand turn, I don't know, Bob, you know, working for the post office, you try to eliminate any left-hand turns. Mm -hmm. You've got that hill coming down from the west headed east. Um, where there's a no-passing zone, right where the carts would be turning into acorn acres. And, and the other concern I have is on a business aspect. Um, that golf course operates as a business entity. And right now they've got, I think it's 13 um, places where people can still rent space to store their golf carts at $100 a year. So, if you're looking at an economic standpoint, um, and they still have space to rent those carts, why would we be taking money away from that possibility of their income? Okay, thank you, Janelle. You're welcome.
county attorney was here, and I just jumped on there to ask about that a little bit. It hasn't come up for a vote or anything yet. Nothing else for Mark yet? I'm going to stick around for the next I'm just going to sit and listen for a next while. exciting event here. Uh, item three, wastewater pretreatment plant update. Tom, you're in the hot seat. Always. Um, <laughs> we've got the tank project out for bids that we had talked about last time. Um, we have to have a small change. We're going to push the bid opening date back a week. Um, I can't remember if it's this week or next week is a major American Water Works Association meeting, countrywide thing. And I got a call from two tank guys right away saying they wouldn't be able to put a bid together because they're at this particular meeting, so we pushed it back a week because it's worth it for us to make sure we get competition for you guys. So, so what date would that be? Then? Uh, we're going to open on the 28th and we'll bring it to the July 3rd meeting, I believe. Okay. And did you get the um, notice yesterday from July? Okay, I'll make sure we get that to the date. Um, <coughs> so that's all it really changed on. I just want to make sure that we get uh, uh, enough competition for you guys and mm -hmm. keep the posted. Um, still working with Luke. I do not have the grading plan yet. Um, I talked to him yesterday. They're still working on it. And I, I don't know what else I can tell you on that. But in another week or two, that's going to be a big encumbrance for me. So I'm, I'll be letting him know that this week because we've got to get that work done before the tank guys get here. And the last thing I want to do is open up bids on the tanks and say those guys in their mind have the work schedule in place. And if we push that work schedule, they got a right to come back and ask for more money. So we want to avoid all those kinds of things. Um, so I'll keep pushing them on that. Um, I think the last thing that's on your, maybe it's, it's a line on the agenda for, there's a, we got to get water out to the right, site. Right, yeah, that's item A, discussion of pro possible approval to get quotes up for a water main extension. Yep. Um, again, that's something that we can, if we get a prime contractor on the site, he's not going to dig that water main. He's going to have an underground company do it, and we're going to pay a little bit of markup on that, so on and so forth. Um, what I would like to do is, since it's a fairly minor project, you know, 10000 bucks plus or minus, I'd like to get quotes from the two local contractors um, to run that water main extension and present that to you guys, you know, two, three weeks from now, and go that route if that's okay with you. I'll keep the work local, and again, it's not a huge amount, but it's removed from the site, so again, it's a great point to have somebody else do work. And we got it ready, so... That's something we get out the door and do things well. If you guys are okay with that, I'll get a couple quotes. Yeah, bring that down the ditch too. Yeah, and I've got to work with uh, Jerry and Rich yet to figure out. Um, we have been talking on and off about filling those ditches in, mm -hmm. and we just have to understand if we're going to bury the pipe one foot and then bury the ditches, or if we're going to bury the pipe five and a half feet and leave the ditches as they are. So we'll work that out. Um, same with the road crossing if they need that patch back in or things crap, but I'll work it out. That's all I got for, oh, one other quick update. Um, today, some additional samples were picked up at Abbott Labs. And what we're trying to do here is, um, in the beginning, we did a bunch of chemical tests on the wastewater those those guys have to kind of get an understanding of our chemical usage. Um, because that goes into play with the ongoing operation and maintenance of the wastewater plant and what the user fee is going to be about. We did that in a hurry to kind of get some equipment picked out. Now what we're doing is work with another chemical company to fine tune and see if we can to reduce those costs and maybe even find better products that work with this material. So that's kind of a side project going on uh, to get that fine tuned because we got to be ready when the plant starts up to use something. And then once the plant starts up, in my mind, we will invite other chemical guys in that want our business to fine tune it even further. But to get things going, we got to have a good handle on so that's kind of a little side project. Other than that, things are still moving forward. So, okay. That's not about to get the dirt work out there. I mean, I can't imagine. You <laughs> wouldn't think that big of a deal, would it? Right. <laughs> You're this far along, you don't know how you want the hill to look. I wish I had more to tell you now. But I, you know, we got a meeting with Luke on Thursday, and I'll email him today, too, to see if we can get that pushed along. But uh, that's what we're at. Tom, I just stepped in, as you mentioned to him about that we might. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you thought any more about the ditch? 
I don't see why we couldn't do it. Okay. Let me ask you another quick question, Rich. Um, I'll be running my water main on the south side of the road. I got to cross the north side. Um, a, is it okay if I cut open the street and do that work? And yeah, then, there'll be nothing left of that road anyway when they're done. That's what I was figuring. <laughs> and then B, do you want to just patch it in with gravel or do you want an asphalt You might just put gravel back in it. And then we'll just keep it maintained. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. That takes care of my, some of my design details. Once I get that done, I'll work the bridge to get the working right away permit taken care of and all that stuff. So, okay. All right. Well, that's great. all I got for you today, guys. Thanks, Tom. All right. Talk to you later. Item four. Resolution approving issuance of a taxable general obligation county purpose loan agreement anticipation project note in the <laughs> principal amount not to exceed $1.5 million. Is that correct? Well, I'm not sure this item is really me, but um, if I can help out, um, this is the temporary debt we've been talking about right. placing. And I'll share with you um, these reports. These are the exhibits that go along with the development agreement that have the budgets that Tom gave me. And what we're trying to do is get a handle on exactly how much money we need for this project. So you'll see um, the wastewater treatment project. Let's start municipal sewer because that's C has 4.4 million, of course 500,000 of that is CDBG funding. I take it the typo here on the second to the last, uh, well it's the last sentence, uh, October 11th, 2012. That is when it was given. Oh, uh, you, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I, I'm defining, no, you're right, it is, it is a typo, you're exactly right, it's 2000. 11. And maybe Tom will want me to use a current um, number, a, a current date, because he continues to review these. Thank you. Mm -hmm. this, was, this was effective, or this was as of October 11th of last year. Correct. Okay. So that, that's when we started, you know, again, looking at this budget. Mm -hmm. And you'll see <coughs> engineering and project costs, and the way we've arrived at that number is um, the design fees, um, construction management, legal fees, fi some financing fees, not the, not the ones in um, the costs related to Northland Securities bonds, but this is your uh, standard employer's rating with a little extra in there, planning fees, and then um, a 10% contingency so we take we took the contingency out of that part so we're taking that money and that comes up to six hundred and thirty thousand each project we're just splitting those costs in half and then on the second on the next one exhibit D is the pre-treatment costs and so You'll see again, um, as Tom mentioned last week, we're only at probably 50 to 25 percent design cost. So these are the best numbers we have today. So it, it feels like we did get a response. I think you saw John's letter, and I was on the phone with him this morning. Our goal is to have, I think now we're at the case where it's attorney to attorney that John has some responses. The, responses we got were, pr in my mind, pretty minor, pretty manageable. They, they have no understanding of how Iowa tax situation, how our taxes work. So they were asking for things like move the assessment date back to October 1. Well, that's not, you know, that's just not how it works here. They wanted payments on a different schedule than June and December. And while there's nothing in code that says your bonds have to be paid, then that's just the practical way we do business in Iowa for getting your, most of your taxes are in the first half in June and most of the taxes are in the second half in December. So I think we'll be okay. We want to make sure that amortization schedule that we share with them. We want to have a complete package in our response so that everybody's happy and we can continue to move this forward. And again, we, we all know um, costs continue to increase, so that's why we've got that contingency. 
I, I will tell you with our last invoice just from April, Planscape has um, superseded our uh, what we had anticipated our fees were. So we can work, as I'm assuming the attorneys do, on just a time hourly basis, time and, and materials, or I can guess again for um, yet another proposal. So. I don't think it's Okay. Keep going. <clears throat> I want a motion on that, a fact, or whatever. Uh, we're comfortable. I mean, we don't need it for our purposes. It's um, all so turned out a little bit more complicated than anybody <laughs> thought. And, a little. And it's yeah. not so much on our side that it got complicated. It's on the other side. We can say it is. And and then you know, um, none of us anticipated amending the urban renewal plan right away um, for those for those reasons. Which planning and zoning is tonight. On that hearing, um, Brenda and Stan went last night to St. Ansgar, and so we do have the agreement. And I will have a resolution for you next week when we move, you know, with the last piece of that. So, my understanding for the um, say for the resolution on the table this morning about the borrowing that Stan went to the bank, and, and it's going to go through and. And we hope to be able to pay that off as soon as we. Yeah. So we talked about about 1.5 million. Right. So. 9 million? 1.5. Oh, I was going to say, I thought you said 5 million. 1.5. 1.5. No, 1.5. One and a half. There right. We go. How's that sound better? <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I saw it last night. Um, <laughs> but you guys, I knew you guys wouldn't get it. You knew you wouldn't get it, too. So, again, our goal is to. Um, as as letter said, continue to move negotiations forward. I don't think there's anything that's um, a deal breaker for anyone. Uh, the financing, we've got that. And then the third piece again is what John and I agreed to this morning is he is going to contact the attorney, tell them we will try to have a response to them on Wednesday, and then they will have a conference call on Thursday so that we can keep moving this. Okay. Motion to approve <coughs> resolution for the issuance of taxable geo county uh, purpose loan agreement on the project. And the principal amount not to exceed 1.5 million. So move. Second. A motion and a second. The resolution previously mentioned. Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Aye. Walk. Aye. Morale. Aye. Thank you. Does anyone carry. have any other questions about where we are? And, and again, we're not even tackling the pre treatment agreement for at this point. Um, we just want this piece. We just need this money for the done. fiscal year. This is. This yeah, is. This is. Some expenses. Right. Um, Glad to hear they're going to get together and hammer out the rest of it. Well, and I do think, you know, Bob, or uh, John said, well, you know, who's supposed to do this? I said, well, John, in my opinion, and I'll talk to Brenda, but my opinion now, it's attorney to attorney. Tom Green has his input, and I've already given John what I feel are, the pro you know, some of my feelings on how best to serve you. Um, Again, my sense is that it's a, a, just not a clear understanding of how we do business in Iowa, how our taxes are collected and how our assessments are done. And other than that, there might be a few minor things. But now we're at the point that they can communicate to one another and come back um, with the middle ground. That's just a deal. Tell them Google Iowa law. Right. It's all right there. Well. <laughs> Where are they from? Mm -hmm. California? That's it. I don't know where the. I'm guessing Cal. I'm no. I'm guessing um, Chicago because okay. of Libertyville. But I don't know. I don't know where they are. And their attorneys, this Dougal Seikert is their main attorney, and he's been on vacation. So then they kicked it to somebody else, and so I think Dougal's back today, or yes, was back yesterday. So wherever it got kicked to, no. Well, I mean, some of it was some, I mean, you know, there were, there were goofy little things like they changed instead of county indebtedness to indebtedness of county. I mean, you know, it was just 
Just for case. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tennis match or ping pong. Yeah, right? the you ball's know. in your court now, it's back in your court. Right. So, right. Right. So. Thank you. Yes, Let's thank you, Kathy. Sweet. Thank you. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Yes. Okay, looks like item five is a county engineer. Rich Pro. Good morning. Good morning, Ray. This is the original signature page. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, the way it is. Um, we took quotes last week, actually, the week before. I forgot to mention it last week, but uh, our annual highway painting, I don't remember if I mentioned it to you guys last night. I don't but remember the, last week. No, I told Worth County and we got in discussions about stuff here and I forgot to mention it to you. Uh, we took quotes for about 56 miles worth of painting on our roads again, our annual maintenance. And a little bitter was that cam line painting who we had last year. If you remember right, they were able to come in here and knock it out in the time frame that we wanted. So they quoted us again, and it's actually almost, uh, it's about 70 cents cheaper this year than it was last year. And that was because last year they had a paint shortage and everything else. And they 70 were, cents an inch or a mile? 70 cents a gallon cheaper. Oh, a gallon, yeah. okay. 70 cents for the whole project. <laughs> 70 cents a gallon cheaper. So okay. it worked out really well that, that the numbers came in the way they did. We had a completion date of, um, I think we had September 31st. We'll get it done long before winter. Um, we got the mowers running. We kind of forgot St. Esther had their big festival this weekend, so I'm sending all the mowers up there to get the blacktops knocked down. We have our blacktop mower blew a hose yesterday, and then the windshield had a crack in it. It's broke. So it'll take us some time to get that one. But I sent two of the, I, we've got the, the uh, brush cutter out there. We're getting behind the guardrails on Foothill. We had an email from, I had an email from you about that site distance, so we're knocking that stuff down today. Then we're going to try to get 105 and west of Sandster, Foothill all mowed. So it looks nice for people when they come in. And uh, then we'll get to our lot, our, our old lot out there. We'll try to get that, those, that grass knocked down on that old lot yet. So um, we started the rock run yesterday. We're working up in the McIntyre area when they get done there. I don't know exactly where they'll head out, but they wanted to do McIntyre area first one because they wanted to get to the rock before Howard County did. <laughs> so um, we started doing a little ditch project there between McIntyre and Stacyville where we were trying to clean the flow line out and pull the shoulders back up. We got narrow shoulders in that road and in two years when we do that project it will reduce the amount of dirt we have to have hauled in. So we're trying to salvage what we can out of the ditch flow line and pull it up to the shoulders and get better shoulders. That's right. West or east of Stacyville, maybe? East, yeah, the Stacyville, Stacyville McIntyre, 470th and 465th, that run through there. Oh, Stacyville, yeah, 460th. Yep. 470th. Yep. So they're actually doing about a mile in two days, both sides. So we'll see what we can pull out of there. It's kind of soddy right now. We may want to rent a small dozer to get the thing shaped up a little bit better. But I think, you know, we looked at these other projects. Maybe we could have done that prior. I mean, with all the miles we did, there was no way we could have done it all at once. But we can kind of utilize the existing dirt and keep it there without having to truck all this other dirt in and then come to find out later that maybe we should have cleaned the ditch. So we're trying it. Uh, we're looking at the numbers. If it doesn't pan out to be efficient enough, maybe we'll scrap it. I mean, some places we're not getting a lot of dirt, but when you've got a, the bottom of that ditch is almost... Let's see, we're running a motor grade with 12 foot mow board, so it's at least 12 foot wide. You can roll all that dirt to the to the slope. I mean, that it adds quite a bit of dirt to there. Mm -hmm. and in some spots, we get more than a foot worth of dirt. So, and we're trying to clean out all the pipes and all the cross pipes, and then we'll look at seeing how we have to extend some of these boxes. So, that's what the guys are doing over there, along with the rock run. Um, last week, uh, we did have an accident on the Stillwater Bridge last Friday, and we we're getting materials ready to clean that guardrail up. Guardrail worked like it was supposed to. If you guys go out there and look at it, the heads on the end of the guardrail are, are designed to push along the guardrail, and then the guardrail ribbons out, so it absorbs the energy by rolling the guardrail. Somebody hit her. Yep, somebody hit it. So I guess the, 
I don't know what happened as far as what caused it, but uh, so we got to get that fixed. But uh, I'm sure that'll be an insurance claim. Else. It'll be about when they put it in. It was about a twenty-one hundred dollar item. So we don't know who hit it. I don't know who hit it. I know there's a sheriff report. Oh, there was. Yeah, the sheriff was out there. They had to transport it to the hospital. So. Mm -hmm. But it was on the inside of the curve, which I don't understand what happened there. But um, we'll go to New Haven tomorrow and get that little shoulder squared away. On by the church yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. And I'll look at them signs for chance. Do you want to get a chance today? Yeah. Who's up on that? I want to see what's going on. Uh, last week, you guys asked about anybody willing to spray weeds. Um, yeah, you know, I was supposed to hear from the weed commissioner yesterday, and I never did. He was okay. supposed to go back to the doctor yesterday, and I never heard back from him. Uh, and Joe Larson has some interest in it. Okay, um, good. He's our part-timer, but I know that Brian's been up talking to Jane upstairs and whatnot. I don't know for sure whether he understands it's a different, you know, you guys usually take care of the weeds, the weed commissioner part of it, so I think they understand where that's coming from. So. I don't know how much he knows about what Nick did, but I mean, he was asking about, you know. Is he all, he's probably certified for most of it? Uh, Joe is certified to spray our ditches. I mean, we've got him in the brush cutter. He does, he's got a spray <coughs> license. So I think for the most part, he's certified to do what we need him to yeah. do. Yeah, and we looked into uh, <coughs> spraying around the, uh, the lagoon up at Carpenter. That one's a little bit more tricky. Yeah, you have to have an aquatic. Right, and I don't license. know that we have the aquatic licenses yeah, on any so of our guys. And I don't even know if Nick does, does he? I don't, no, I don't no, think he does either. So no, I, know, I know he doesn't. You know, right? I talked to him about it, and then they have to have a certain, there's only certain herbicides that can be used yep. uh, near that water. So that's a whole different ballgame. Probably so, for uh, Joe's uh, wages for that too should, I guess, Pay the same thing as he's making the secondary roads. Well, that's which a, is you probably are, different than it's what a lot different than what Nick's getting. So I guess that's, I mean, that's kind of up to you guys. Well, if you're going to ask him to <clears throat> basically take less money, I mean, why would he want to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, if, he, if he's already at a set wage, yeah. I'd probably just leave it there okay. for for, uh, mm -hmm. for Joe because he's uh, helping out. You know, he's, yeah, I, that's worth a lot. He asked about taking the truck home, and I don't think he needs to take the truck home. He can park it at Stacyville and all the chemicals in Osage. So, I mean, it's going to be a shifty thing. But I think even if you park it at Stacyville, that's fine. Yeah, because, I mean, you can head out from there. Yep. I mean, there's there's weeds all over the county. Yeah. Now, just, yep. We'll talk to him a little bit more and see if he's comfortable doing it. I mean, he did express some interest, which is good. That means somebody's familiar with the roads already. I took a tour last Wednesday of uh, that area up around McIntyre. Right, Elwood, give me a call, one minute o'clock, and take a look at things up there. Multifloral rows, it's really, I, it's back in Mills area. So, oh, okay. And, and a lot of the Amish have this entire fence lines. It, it just keeps multiplying, and it's a, it's a noxious weed. And a lot of them don't want us to spray next to their stuff either. Right, and, and Fred's been doing a lot of volunteer work out there. He said he sprayed 385 gallons of stuff through his... Uh, a little ATV with a 25-gallon tank, so that's a lot of tanks. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, uh, it can be a real, a real problem. It's, it's more or less in that area around the uh, oh, the bike trail there, the Huffman Wildlife area. Okay. But uh, the multifloral rows will it just it's, uh, it will take over. You couldn't could believe all of it that was out in there when we went back in there on the ATV and up the bike trail. It's just unreal. Lots of those, but he sprayed a lot of it. He got some herbicide from Bell. So. Okay. But it's something to be aware of, too, when you talk to Joe. Yep, we'll get to we'll get him. Was <coughs> Nick coming back at all? Hmm? Nick coming back at all? I don't know. He was supposed to call me yesterday because he said he had a doctor's appointment. But apparently that got changed, so he hasn't called. So was he thinking about being able to get back off on? Well, he, he yeah, he was hoping that, you know, yeah. depending, but uh, so I, I don't know. I'm, well, would this be kind of a temporary thing until Nick could yes. come back then, or how are you, how are you thinking this would work then? I'm, as far as right now, it's... I from heard, what we know right now, it's not... I haven't heard from Nick, okay. so... Uh, 
probably should have called him yesterday, but I never gave it a thought. He okay. was supposed to call me. Okay. Well, that's all I got to update you on. Um, did you want to echo? <coughs> no, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I just about that dirt, you know. Yeah, we were, I had talked to uh, Tom last week after meeting about the dirt. You know, he had told me that they had gotten some quotes from Pop on fill dirt and the cost, and I kind of think we've got a pile of stuff at the shop that we could just as easily start getting rid of. I mean, yeah. we bring in five loads and maybe take one out, you know, we keep accumulating it, and I think it's going to be good enough to fill those ditches in, so versus paying $10,000 for culvert in there mm -hmm. when the intent is to fill it in anyway, I don't think that's money well spent. So. The way that water flows out of there, it's all a sheet flow anyway. So we talked about, I talked a little bit about to Tom about actually having pots come in and actually load it and haul it out of the yard there. I mean, it increases our traffic a little bit, but it's not that home of a haul either. So just to give you guys a heads up that it, it makes things cheaper in the long run for that, for you guys as far as paying for that project. Mm -hmm. It might be a... Um, add to the water main bed or something like that because then they'll just set the pipe in the bottom of the ditch or a foot deep and bury it instead of digging. Yeah, it'll go in a lot faster. Six foot deep, deep in the ditch and, and then um, we'll be setting maybe, I'll just extend it right down the orchard road and pay for that. Just Won't to, that freeze up to when it's just that shallow? Or? Well, once you put that dirt on top of it, we'll bury it right away. How deep? Oh, I mean. Well, they'll probably bury it maybe a foot into a the foot. ditch and then calculate what we got for yeah. a ditch fill. Well, we need a five foot cover or six. You know. They'll bury it okay. first and cover it. But as far as uh, scratching it in the bottom of the ditch, it'll take nothing to do. I mean, sure. It'll be really, uh, for your prices portion to the treatment. You cost a pipe and a little labor, and that's about it. And just bury the ditch. And maybe we'll continue on all the way pops. Be done with it. I keep getting questions about the bridges when we're going to fix them. And well, when you fix that bridge, how come you didn't fix this one? And they don't realize there is a difference in well the size of the streams and you know, rivers. The, you, and you had asked about the one by McIntyre on timber, yeah. on timber, and you know we get noticed that the bridges are closed. We went from a year where that bridge line didn't have any posting on it to be enclosed. And then you've got to get it into the, that one is qual qualifies for, for federal funds. So if we want to spend our federal funds on that bridge, you got to put it in the TIF, which is the, the program. You got to put it in, get it approved, and then you can start working on the concept statement and get it through the program. Well, you know, we get our information back in April and they want it in the TIF by May, so they approve it in June, so here we are. Now we can start going through the process of design. Well, you put it in the concept statement today, the lending's not until December. That's just the process of how the whole system works as far as getting the funding and all the review for the plans and whatnot. So it isn't a lickety split deal. Now, if we weren't going to use bridge funds for it, it could probably go a little faster because we could do it all locally. But I guess I wanted to start using our bridge funds before we lose them on right. some of that stuff. So, I mean, we used up all our bridge funds. Well, we did, but we still we're accumulating. We're accumulating as we go, also, so we can kind of keep trying to fix some things as we go too. Well, I thought, like I'm saying, Oscar, we did that, but I thought we borrowed ahead. We did a little bit, oh, but okay. the, what we what we borrowed ahead doesn't break the bank for fiscal year 13, where we can still have some funds in there to, to fix them. Now we can see how the, this fiscal year ends up as far as. June 30th, where we're at dollar-wise, if we've got a decent carryover, maybe we can do it locally, but, you know, it's going to have to be a, a budget amendment change next year then, because we're going to overspend in that category to do that. You know, that road has nobody that lives on it other than there's access to the fields on the south side of that creek from the blacktop, and then, you know, that there, I understand people got to drive around to get to the other accesses for the fields on the north side of that creek. But is that yeah. the one up uh, just south of David, the first mile south of David? I believe. 
Okay, there's three bridges on that road, then, I guess. It's this one right here on Timber, the very south one right off the right off the blacktop. Right off of... Uh, right off of 430th to the north. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. yeah that's, that's the one I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's access to those fields off the blacktop on both sides here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there, it's, it's unfortunate there's a two mile stretch here to, to access these fields, but... We've got that one in the program for this year, and then I put this one in the program for the following year. That's a five-ton bridge next to the quarry. Then. The one right off the of nine? Yeah. On the north-south road? Yeah, but I also understand we want to still do hickory. So, I mean, we've got a... So, we got about three... Well, we can... Three and a half bridges to do yet. Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of bridges and not a lot of money, so... Now, were any of those able to be fixed in-house here? You were mentioning something about the posts being able to... All of those are set. Well, we got the one in Primrose too. Another one up there by Stacyville. Yeah. You know, we've got two concrete bridges on wood piling. If you're taking the deck off anyway, I don't see the reason to put it back. On. I mean, it, you got to drive new pile and new abutments, and it's just easier sometimes just to put a box in. And a box is going to cost somewhere around two hundred thousand dollars, depending on the size. Um, I'm still thinking hickory might be possible to do with pipe. Problem is the pipe supplier doesn't have enough of the same size. The one pipe supplier we've been getting from doesn't have enough big ones of the same size and length to put in. I did find another pipe supplier in Oklahoma who seems to be able to, to work with us on getting pipe of the same size and of the same length, or actually a little bit cheaper. So I just ordered free pipe for more there for Worth County yesterday out of Oklahoma. So there's a lot of Putting it in the, the program for federal funds is so much slower, but it takes the burden off the local dollars. Right. Certainly. And there's a process to it. It's not here we are and go. Yeah, I just wanted something to, you know. And had it been an had it been that close to close, we could have had it in the program two years ago, but it went like that. Yep. So how do you plan for it? Right, you can't. So, yeah, I know there are a lot of questions about bridges and I know we've got a lot of them to fix. Well, nobody stays home anymore. So well, that's no problem. We've got a mobile, well, very mobile you know, population. And I understand. You know, you're you're used to driving that road. It's the shortest route, and all of a sudden you got to go around. It's not convenient. It's not fun. But I'm just glad we have the bridges we have, and we don't have somebody else, other counties, where they've got 50 bridges that are closed right. and closed. Right. And How many bridges do we? 140. Yeah, I think that's what it is here. Well, it's over a hundred. And what do we have? Twenty some of them posted, so I don't remember what we approved last week, but yeah, we're you know. We're lucky we got any of them. <laughs> and we're trying to fix them as cheap as we can too. You know, those, those rail cars that Jim Hyde started were you know that's you know, roughly for a triple pipe, it's fifty thousand dollar repair. That's a lot cheaper than a two hundred thousand dollar box. This one, they come in and, and they inspect our bridges. They inspect those also. Correct, but there's no specific. How do you want to say procedure for inspection? You know, they span more than twenty feet, so they're considered a structure. But the feds. It's coming down the pipeline now where they're trying to come up with a system of evaluating the integrity of culprits now. Before they didn't really inspect them. Now they're coming up with a procedure. So it's just on its way. Well, okay. Ours will be grandfathered in, I'm sure. Well, I mean, they, they don't have an issue with the pipe. It's just a matter of they got to figure out how the feds want them to evaluate. You know, we've got a, a rail car that's got a half inch thick steel wall. So you take that into account. You know, how much covers on top of it. You know, normally they aren't evaluating these because they're structured. A lot of the load is based on the soil. You know, you got most of your loads go through the soil and not the pipe. But they just got to come up with a. They're coming up with a procedure to evaluate them, so that's the next thing on the list. You know, they, a lot of times the inspectors drive by and say, box culvert, and they'll take a few pictures and 
could give us the condition of it, but there's nothing nothing really to do in the office. We're getting emails back from SIMS now, which is the, the state program, in, the state inventory, um, saying, well, there's no analysis. Well, it's a box cover. Well, they're still in that process of amending the software and everything else to make it work, and it's just not there yet. So the bridge on Windfall there with the three tubes was around 50000 to fix exactly. that one? The pipe were, you know, roughly about 11000 each. Just so I have something to talk to them about. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, you know, you, you figure, know, you know, 30,000 in pipe, and then we've got labor and rock and concrete and grout to fill it in, you know, and the steel for the plating and everything else. It, it adds up. It's about 50,000 bucks, probably. Yeah, because, you know, people think, well, a bridge is a bridge is a bridge. Mm -hmm. but they're not. So, okay, thanks a lot, Rich. Yep. Give them some ammunition. <coughs> anything else? Meet in Mac or in Carpenter. Yep. Noon today. Yep. All right. We'll see you then. Thanks, oh, thanks for buying. <laughs> oh sure. Uh, what? <laughs> glass of water. I'll send you the bill from Menards last night. <laughs> Everybody gets a pine float. Right? <laughs> I got one of my wife in the bathroom for it. But uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, item number six is uh, approval of the minutes. Second to approve the minutes of June 5th, 2012. Uh, roll call, vote, roll call. Block? Aye. Wolfinder? Aye. Merrill? Aye. Motion carried. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at the claims. Uh, I'll skip over them for now and, yeah, and uh, then I'll recess them a little bit. Item number eight uh, application for annex. Of county property into the city of Osage. At uh, Kurt and Susan Mills have applied. I'm assuming that's the uh, body shop in the area out there. On the it's correct. the Kubitschek property. They bought that. And actually, the well, okay, I see uh, they're coming back. Yeah, the little body shop, from, his body shop staying out. Pardon? He, and the body shop staying out is building a new structure, oh. a new business completely, and selling that off as a garage or something. And uh, he wanted, he came to us and wanted all utilities, everything, and, and then he decided he should annex in. So he wanted higher taxes. Yeah, and he wants a little incentive, you know. Higher help. taxes. <laughs> yeah, he studied it and he said, you know what? The way this town's growing, you'll probably annex me in in a couple of years anyway. I said, if that's the way you will take you right now, and we did. It's no <laughs> big deal. No. So move. Thanks, Dan. We're going to grow all the way to St. Anthony. <laughs> What's that? We're going to grow all the way to St. Anthony. <laughs> Such a district. A motion and a second to approve the application uh, for annexation of county property into the city of Osage. Roll call vote walk. Aye. Vote lander? Aye. Morale? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, item number nine, resolution to allow golf carts to operate on Highway 105 to Acorn Park Golf Course at St. Ansker. I think I already stated what I had found and Mark was going to look into it a little more and uh, we heard from Janiel Dunn who had talked to Bob Clark. What three twenty one two forty seven says is golf cart operation on city streets. Obviously, the code does not address golf carts operating on county roads. Under home rule, I believe we can allow golf carts to operate on county roads. I will 
check with the county attorney. Do that. Oh, I just mentioned the primary role, so that's why I got extensions. Yes. Extensions. In other words, in other words, uh, if we are maintaining the road past uh, uh, the knitting mill, if that was an extension of our road, and we're maintaining it, that's what that uh, was explaining, is you cannot be crossing those kind of things. But like I say, it's only addressing cities. It's not addressing county. And under home rule, we have the right to do anything that is not prohibited under well, law. Obviously somebody requested this. So. Pardon? Somebody requested this. Yeah. Who, who is who's the uh, interested party? Uh, uh, Councilman uh, Paul Grove. <clears throat> he said that uh, St. Anstor would like the same opportunities that Osage has. That different ones would like to drive out to uh, so I have a question. Does that mean they could have a golf cart at Casey's, throw in a golf club into their golf cart, using Joel's, Joel's analogy with a pitchfork and an ATV, and mm -hmm. meander down Highway 105, do their business, and say they were going golfing? No, it's just allowing them to use the 105. You can't go out. Well, 105 starts at Casey's. Oh, okay, I see. Give your Main Street. Mm -hmm. But that's already, the city's already approved the golf cart, so. so. so just to cross the street. Oh. Just to cross. They can't go down. So that's the one that says primary road, that's what they're. <clears throat> I guess my question to you is why are you so concerned about worrying about the safety of somebody else? I'm I mean, not talking about the safety. No, of I'm, why are you so concerned about worrying about the safety of somebody else? Uh, don't not. you have enough to do on your own, Stan? worrying about your own things? Stop it. No, I don't have to stop it. Stan, that's enough. We didn't come here to argue. I, I'm, I brought it's the question to uh, Bob Clark to get some explanation on it. And Is Bob Clark a... Um, he's the, the head of DOT. He, he holds the office, the Department of Transportation. He's a member of... He, is he an attorney? <clears throat> no, are you? Okay, that's enough. If, uh, from my, if you want to table it till next week, or if you want to vote on it today, I'm just stating my opinion. I don't feel it's safe. The traffic count is 10 times higher on 105 than it is on the golf course road. 800 compared to 80. And that's just my personal feeling. I would, I would, you know, well, Mark I, said he'd look into it. Yeah, yeah Mark said he'd look I'm into it. And if you want to pass it, you can pass it without my approval. Uh, I, I, my personal opinion, it's not uh, um, a real safe deal, especially with crossing that bridge. You know, I mean, we were worried about farm machinery on, on Foothill, so we cut the thing down and everything, and now we're going to approve a golf cart on, I, you know, you want to do it? Do you can ride a bicycle out there? Huh? Can you ride a bicycle? Yeah, you can ride a horse, you can do everything you want. It's, you know, it's, it's just that. I'm just expressing my opinion. I know, I know it's what you're saying. It's my opinion. If they want to go, you know, that's I fine. A lot of people have death wish. <laughs> it won't be me out there running a golf cart on a bridge. Let's hear what Mark has to say next week, and then we'll make a decision. Okay. So okay, stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. <clears throat> Meters of us driving one out there, but and still, on the other hand, I shouldn't keep bringing it up, but you're going to have slow moving vehicle signs on it, you're going to have that part flags true. on it, you're going to have, you know, um, when I'm driving, I have to a lot of times slow down for small tractors. So, oh, I'm, sure, I mean, you know, right, so, I mean, just you have to be one more thing aware. to look out for, you know, I just there. On the other hand, then we sign it. Isn't there such a thing as you've seen? Well, the I think more of that speed limit down out there. In, uh, I thought I've seen, I thought Riceville has them, don't they? Have what? A sign that, with golf cart on it or something? Oh, I'm not, I don't think I've seen one there. No, but I uh, think I'm more of that speed limit, uh, you know, from Acorn Park into St. Hansker down to 25. That would tell me what is it now? 255. Mm -hmm. We got 35 out south of town, you know, that would be the difference.
I, 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 I'm just, just discussing my opinion. Right? We can go on for yeah. a couple hours. Before. We'll save it for next week. Uh, let's see. Item 10, items of note. Meetings attended. Make our meeting. We discussed our proposed budget and we accepted one that was about four million dollars higher than what our previous budget was, and that's basically due to the flood houses that we have to run that money through. That was my meeting. I am meeting last Thursday afternoon with uh, Chuck Goodman from Gallagher. He's our boss control person recently hired. He went around all the counties and met with the safety providers and asked for input of what goals we need in the county. Um, I brought up that I think it would be good in some way if people would be more aware of the dangers when they're working of what, you know, that there is danger when you are working, whether you're climbing up or a piece of machinery, you know, tracks muddy, can you slip, could you, you know, I mean, just more information, I guess, uh, instead of the same old pamphlets, uh, Claudia brought up the fact that the, the videos and stuff that they have today are really antiquated, you know, I mean, that people watch them, you know, it doesn't really sink in or mean anything to today's world, but I oftentimes see people, and I see it a lot in law enforcement we're driving along like this you know it's not the radio it's the cell phone that's stuck to their ear and I see it I don't know I see it definitely just say it's city cops I mean, yeah they all got a phone stuck in their ear right. see them all over any town you want to go to Jason City to Minneapolis I've been on both of them last week and it's the same everywhere and I've been driving too and I notice people when they drive you know they forget that they got a little lever on the side of the steering wheel that indicates which direction you're going to turn. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, those people are you know, just trying to turn around. They forget everything. In some ways, I don't almost see those. Can I say understand. something? They were outlawed in Chicago. And uh, you can have a, you, can, you can't have a handheld phone. And there's a very high penalty for it, like $200 for the first arrest. And boy, that stopped it. Be almost better if you had the Bluetooth and what you know come through your radio, right? <clears throat> Something like that, because that at least leaves your other hand free to operate the turn signals or you know whatever. But yeah, I agree. It's in Chicago. I imagine that would be get everybody running around with cell phones stuck their ear and one hand driving. It's white knuckle driving anyway without the body shops. Are just <laughs> lost, <aren't they? laughs> I've never done that. So, anyway, that was my meme. I had a meeting last Tuesday noon with the uh, director of uh, Floyd Mitchell, Chickasaw Early Childhood, uh, Iowa area, and it was uh, just a performance review for the director. And uh, yesterday morning, I had a short meeting with the Decategorization Governance Board meeting in Charles City, and it was basically to uh, uh, approve and renew uh, various contracts. Uh, not a long meeting. <clears throat> one of the things they did mention is they are continuing with the free movies once a month uh, down in Charles City. Uh, part of the mentoring uh, program. Uh, Finding Nemo is going to be shown the 16th. So, that's a free movie they can run. That was the only two I had. Item B, appointment to conservation board. Just a reminder, you have an appointment to make by the end of June, June 30th, Jim Oberfell's. Is that reappointment? Yeah, I think he would be, he's just in his first one. Okay. Is he willing to serve again? I mean, he's always uh, served. No, no hasn't term. said anything, so. Have you heard anything, Stan? I don't know that he's been asked yet. Okay. Is there a conservation meeting tonight? Mm -hmm. You want to ask him or you want me to? Yeah, yes. That's Jim Oberfell. We can make that appointment subject to his acceptance. Sure. Um, with the other applications, if, we, if they don't, if he doesn't want it, right? Yeah. What 
are we allowing? Two terms? Two terms. Five year terms. And then they have to set out one? Yep. And then they come back on? Mm -hmm. well, you didn't say that on the board. What do you feel? I mean, he, he's been a good board member. I mean, he's, uh, uh, he's not a yes person. He's self conscientious. Mm -hmm. He's. Uh, well, I'd make a motion in the, to that effect that we reappoint Jim over Bell. Okay, so subject, subject subject to, to his, his agreement. Yeah. Or, and then doesn't that board out there have to approve it too? No. No, we just appoint. Okay. Yeah, right. that's about the only thing that we get to do. The only thing we get to do that in the budget, huh? In the budget. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to re reappoint Jim Overfell, subject to his approval. Uh, roll call vote, Hope Flander. Aye. Block. Aye. Morale, aye. Motion to carry. Yeah, we have a Item C, change in employment status. Uh, Aaron Niemeyer is changing employment status from part-time 10 to part-time 25. Those are busy. <coughs> so noted. Item D, click record report. $40.66. We'll take a little recess here and let me look over the claims. Or, and as you can finish looking over the claims. Below, when uh, Ray puts down there that uh, we need to pay these claims and they're going to be reimbursed by the state or whatever, does anybody ever follow up to make sure that we do get reimbursed by the state? And that gets back in the general fund? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Is that your motion? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the claims. Then. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the claims. Roll call both Bo Lander. Aye. Lock. Aye. Morrell. Aye. Motion carried. Yep. Carpenter Community Centers for Hungerford's three. Okay. And Josh is 48 instead of 46. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm with the program now. This is all new. Stan Walk, 45. Jason Schmidt, 32. Um, Mitchell City Hall for Lowell Test, 71. Made a motion, vote under second to accept Kansas. Roll call, vote lock. Aye. 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 Morrell, aye. Motion carried. Okay, then start getting away for five dollar signatures. All right.
Tom is done. It's unreal. Presidential candidates there are, uh, or parties, I mean. Another set to sign. Oh, yeah. just that. Thank you. Supervisors. Mm -hmm. we recess until we meet in Carpenter at noon. Mm -hmm.